Euler's formula, beautiful little formula. To introduce the formula, there's these things called the McLaren series. And what it basically does, it, it represents functions as infinite sum. You see, we can turn all sorts of functions into a polynomial. Now, e to the power of x can actually be written as a polynomial. And here it is, 1 plus x plus x squared on 2 factorial, plus x cubed on 3 factorial, plus x to the 4 on 4 factorial, and so on, and so on, and so on. And if we were to go all the way in summit to infinity, it in fact would fit exactly the same. What do I mean by that? Well, there's the two curves. The black one there, that's my exponential curve. The blue one is that series, but I stopped at x cubed on 3 factorial. You can see around the origin it's starting to fit very nicely. And so the more terms you add on, the closer and closer it starts wrapping to the e to the power of x. And if you had an infinite number of terms, it would fit it exactly. And that's in fact what your calculator does. It doesn't substitute into e to the power of x, it actually substitutes into the polynomial function itself. Cosine has a much more interesting looking general term there, but that's purely because the terms are alternating plus minus plus minus there. So that's why it's got the minus one to the power of n and the powers are even numbers so we get one minus x squared on two factorial plus x to the power of four on four factorial minus x to the power of six on six factorial and so on and if I was to put both of those on there the cosine curve well that's the black one there the blue one again I've just put the first few terms in once again, around the origin, it's fitting it very nicely. The more of those terms I would add in, it would again start wrapping around the cosine curve. If it could put an infinite number of terms down, it would fit exactly. So there's our cosine, and there's the one for sine. It has all the odd powers, but again, those terms you'll see are alternating, plus minus, plus minus. And having a look at that picture, there's y equals sine x, the blue one, and just the first few terms of that sum and once again it wraps quite nicely around the origin if I was to add more terms it would continue wrapping around the sine curve okay so what's the point of all that that brings us then to Euler's formula and what it allows us to do is this beautiful thing where we use imaginary numbers to convert between exponential functions and trig functions because if you look at those patterns they actually were very similar the terms themselves were pretty much the same. It was just pluses and minuses and things like that. So if I let x equal theta in the, uh, the expansion I had for cosine and sine, and cosine theta would be, well, that was the even one, so 1 minus theta squared on 2 factorial plus theta 4 on 4 factorial and so on. Sine was all the odd ones. Now, if I let x equal i theta and put that in the expression for e to the power of x, and we would get this. Now, why make it i theta? Well, because I want to create that alternating. And when I square i, I will get negative 1. And so we'll get minus theta squared on 2 factorial, but then the next one will be minus i theta cubed on 3 factorial, but then plus theta 4 on 4 factorial, and so on. Well, if I was to split that into real and imaginary, have a look at what we end up getting. In the real one, we have 1 minus theta squared on 2 factorial, plus theta 4 on 4 factorial, and so on and so on. Well, that was the expansion for cosine. And if you look at the imaginary one, it becomes the expression for sine. And so we get that lovely relationship. E to the power of i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. So that is Euler's formula. E to the power of i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta for all real theta. It means we now have another way of expressing our complex numbers. We've seen it this way, whereas x plus i y, simply the real part plus the imaginary part, that's what we call Cartesian form, because x and y were the Cartesian coordinates, so we were going to plot it on the argand diagram. Then we saw this, we called it mod arg form, the technical name for it is polar form, although most people, as I say, call it mod arg form. 
but polar form is the name for that. So we have r cos theta plus i sine theta, but now we have the exponential form, and it's very easy to just multiply it by r, and all that's going to do is change the modulus. Because in Euler's formula, we talk about something with a modulus of 1. Well, if the modulus was 2, I would have 2 cos theta plus i sine theta. So in the exponential, I'll multiply the other side by 2 as well. I'd have 2 e to the iota theta. Now, if I want to include the modulus as well, it would be r e to the iota theta. So let's write something in exponential form then. 4 minus 4i, we could rewrite in mod arg form. 4 root 2 cis minus pi on 4. Well, that now means I could write it this way. 4 root 2 e to the power of minus i pi on 4. But now this helps us explain why we add the arguments when we're multiplying. So if z is root 3 plus i and w is 1 minus root 3i, find z times w. Well, if I was to do it in exponential form, we know that when we multiply, we add the powers, the powers of the argument. So that's why when we multiply complex numbers together, we're actually adding the arguments all to do with the exponential and our rules for, well, our index rules, add the uh, powers. But all right, let's finish this off. Two times two is four. I end up with minus i pi on six. If I want to actually calculate what that is, let's go back. We put it back in the mod arg form. Then we can calculate what the cos of minus pi on six is and the sine of minus pi on six is, and we get two root three minus 2i. Well, was that quicker? Probably not. If that was the answer I wanted in that form, it probably was just easier to expand the whole thing out, but at least it gives us another way of doing things. Division, it might be quicker for the division because if I was to leave it in my original form, I'd have to realize the denominator, all those sorts of things. But now I could do it just playing with index laws and I know it's e to the i pi on 2, and that's very nice, because if the argument's pi on 2, then I know it's a purely imaginary number. So that's just i, because the modulus is 1, the argument's pi on 2, it's i. That's certainly quicker for that particular one. z to the power of 5. It's still Dumas when you think about it, because we've got the modulus, we've raised it to the power of 5, but again, our index laws say when we raise to the power of 5, we multiply the powers. Well, when we talk about arguments, we said when we raised it to the power, we multiplied the argument by the power. So again, it's all coming from the index laws. So I have e to the 5i pi on 6, which again, I could then convert back. Is that one quicker? Quite possibly, because it was a high power. That one could be a quicker way of doing it. Let's have a look at this one from, again, a couple of years ago. We're given the complex number z equals e to the iota theta. So our standard one there in exponential form. Show that w, which is z squared minus 1 on z squared plus 1, is a purely imaginary number. So w is z squared minus 1 on z squared plus 1. If I substitute in, I've got to show this is purely imaginary. I'm going to play around with it a bit. What? Hang on. Why did I do this? I've changed it. I've divided everything by e to the iota theta. And then the top of the fraction became e to the iota theta minus e to the minus iota theta. And the bottom of the fraction became e to the iota theta plus e to the minus iota theta. Why did I do that? They would be conjugates because their arguments are opposite of each other. One's positive, one's negative. So I'm saying, hey, on the bottom, I'm adding conjugates together. I know I get twice the real part. Here I'm subtracting on the top. And so I will get, on the top, 2i sine theta. On the bottom, I'll get 2 cos theta. Sine on cos is tan, and the twos will cancel. I'm now saying it's i times tan theta. But tan theta, whilst I don't know what theta is, it's just a number. So I've got some number times i. It's purely imaginary. There's no real part to this question. Okay, so let's play with this beautiful formula. 